Hey there! Welcome back to Reddit Dating, best channel for cheating stories. Make sure to like and subscribe the channel for more spicy stories. Confronted my wife on New Year's morning. She confirmed she was having an affair. I'm devastated. What a shambles I've become. I'm hoping that somewhere in this place I can make a living. My wife and I have been married for 11.5 years and have been together for more than 13 years. We have two children, a girl who is nine and a boy who is seven. I've always thought that our marriage was different from all of the other marriages that we'd seen collapse around us. We are best friends and soulmates who will remain such till death separates us. I was completely mistaken, it seems that my vision of things was different from hers. I was well aware that there were certain things lacking from our relationship, but I believed that the other positive aspects outweighed the negative aspects. I was completely mistaken. Throughout the previous couple of months, I'd seen some unusual behavior, but hadn't put it all together until now. Looking back, I realized that I was in denial about the possibility that this person in whom I placed more faith than life itself might or would leave our marriage. At the beginning of the year, both of us began to improve in terms of health. Weight reduction being the most important factor, I have shed 115 pounds and she has lost 60 pounds. It was improving the quality of our lives. My attitude and view on life were becoming more positive, and our sex life and closeness were becoming more and more intimate, I had very low libido while being as heavy as I was. I had made a mental commitment to myself and my family that 2018 would be the finest year of our life. However, the previous 10 years seemed to have taken a toll on my wife, and she began to search outside of our marriage for companionship. In my observation, she was spending more time with the females after work and participating in more after work events such as becoming more engaged in her union. She was out shopping for new clothing. I put it down to the weight reduction and feeling better, as well as a desire to go out and have more fun, which I always supported since I like going out with the fellas and working out of town on occasion. I never wanted her to feel that she was confined to her home with no access to the outside world. I observed that her phone's location indicator stopped working on several of the evenings she was out, but I didn't think anything of it since she was out of the house. In fact, I felt horrible for even considering the possibility that she may be up to anything. In the end, she informed me on Friday afternoon that she was heading to a friend's home to a few drinks and that she would most likely sleep there the next night. I told her that it was a fantastic idea, that she should have a good time, and that she should collapse there rather than driving home. That night, I looked up her phone location in order to find out where she was staying with a friend without disturbing her sleep. Well, I realized that her location had changed again again. My stomach dropped. I moved from the Find My iPhone application to the Find Friends application. I'd never heard of this app before, and I didn't even realize that we'd signed up for it. Our phone was tracked to a hotel near the airport in our city, which confirmed that we were really there. I couldn't seem to take my gaze away from it. When I woke up the next morning, I saw her vehicle driving through the airport's drop-off loop. I attempted to give her the benefit of the doubt, thinking that maybe her plans with the ladies had changed and they had gone out for drinks instead of remaining in, or that perhaps one of her female friends had required a trip to the airport. When she returned home, I inquired as to how her night had gone. Did they having a good time? Was she at her friend T's home or at her friend K's house when she crashed? She said that they drank and passed out at T's home, 50 miles from the airport. When I inquired as to whether T or K were planned a trip this week, she said that they would be remaining at home. I had a strong desire to blow my top right then and there. Considering that my children were there, I made the decision to keep my mouth shut until that evening, since we had planned on spending the night together. Instead, she fell asleep cuddling with our son, which is something she does on a daily basis since he prefers to be hugged to sleep. It really irritated me. I couldn't get it out of my head, so I began spying on everything. I discovered a pair of panties in her handbag that I had never seen before, as well as a bottle of KY in her bathroom bag, which we had never used before. After which I retrieved her phone from the nightstand in my son's room when she was still asleep my spirit had been destroyed, and I discovered messages, some of which were graphic and Snapchat discussions. She confessed her feelings for him. 
I discovered mobile phone calls on our invoices that had been made as far back as October. 31. There are so many of these, and they are all long one to three hour chats. That night, I didn't get a wink of sleep. I waited until the next morning, New Year's Eve, when I could go into a portion of the home where there were no children, and then I asked her whether anybody else had heard about her new partner. She was taken aback, but she explained that only her buddy Kay was aware of it. She had kept the information hidden from her other friends and family members. She informed me that he was a guy she had met via her union committees, and that he was married as well, which I found out later. Her response was that she couldn't give me his name. I informed her that I would be going for the day, and that I was unsure when I would return. I drove to my workplace, purchased a bottle of whiskey, and proceeded to drink the whole bottle of Jack Daniels, straight from the bottle, while watching my Buffalo Bills advance to the postseason for the first time in 17 years. What a bittersweet day it has been. I was also able to piece together enough information from his social media handles, which were not his actual identities, to figure out who he was and who his wife was, as well as get his wife's mobile phone number from a website on which she was posted. I quickly sent a text message to his wife. She was accompanying him on vacation, and my wife dropped him off at the airport so that she could meet him at their destination. It was also stated that they had been unhappy for a long period of time but that their trip will serve as a first step in rebuilding their marriage. During the time I was at work, my wife sent me many SMS, so I switched off my GPS and banned her from all social media platforms. And didn't say anything. After hearing this, she immediately called her whole family to inform them of what had occurred, since she was unclear whether or not I would contact them first. I didn't, I didn't tell anybody because I was humiliated, embarrassed, and emasculated, and I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone. I waited until the next morning, having slept on the sofa at my workplace before contacting the company. I assured her that I was secure and that if she wanted to speak with me, she should arrange for someone to babysit the children and come to my office. She was apprehensive at first, but eventually arrived. I asked her all of the questions that we all have when something like this happened. Most importantly, she had to decide who she was going to leave behind, me or him. She said that she had cut him off and that she wanted to work with us to make things work. I'm hoping that I'll be able to trust her. We are attempting to be our best selves in front of the children, which includes sleeping in the same bed. She informed me that she needed to work on herself and that she may not be able to remain in our bed. It seems that she has granted me access to her phone. She said that she had a five-minute phone conversation with the other guy to reaffirm that they were done and that they were both going to attempt to make their respective marriages work moving forward. I contacted his wife again this morning to verify if what my wife was stating was correct on their end, and she confirmed it. I have not heard a response from her as of this writing. I haven't informed my wife that I texted her again, and I'm not sure whether I should, but I want to be completely upfront and honest with her about everything. Since then, I've read a slew of entries on this site, as well as a few other blogs. A reference to the 180 was sent to me, which I have already read a couple of times. Man, I've been doing the polar opposite of what the 180 instructs us to do from the first day of the war. That is what has brought me to this blog post and the questions that I am asking myself. I really want to salvage our marriage, and she has expressed the same desire to me, despite the fact that I do not trust a word she says. I am just relying on faith at this point. She said that she would look up phone numbers for counselors and therapists for us today. Individual treatment is followed by couples therapy. For those of you who have reconciled, did you immediately execute the 180 degree turn, or did you wait a while? It seems to be really difficult. Other concerns I have about the 180 are that she knows me better than I know myself, which is a source of concern. It seems to me that she will be able to look right through it and yet understand precisely how I feel about it. I have a nasty habit of lying, particularly to her. I'm also concerned that the 180 will make her feel uncomfortable. There are so many feelings. Is there anybody else who has had a nice experience with counseling, individual, or couples? I'm particularly interested in hearing from those who have endured this and managed to keep their marriages intact, or, more importantly, improve their relationships as a result of the betrayal. I'm very devastated right now. Please accept my thanks in advance.